space and basically be very boring. There is a lot happening in the market, but it's not happening on Bitcoin. It's happening on alts. And it's not happening on all alts, but some alts. In fact, this move is so big, it's so big that it's actually prompting me to make changes to my long-term HODL portfolio. And that's something that if you know me, if you know this channel at all, you know I don't touch my HODL portfolio. So today I'm gonna to tell you why I am making changes to my HODL portfolio, what's prompting this, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm doing. So stay tuned till the end. We may also give away some tokens today. So big, big, big show today. Let's get the show going. All right, welcome back, guys. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I shouldn't be here. I know, I know. I have COVID. I should be in bed. But there is a lot going on, and we need to talk about it. We need to get it all out the way now so that you, you guys can make changes to your portfolio, just like I made some massive changes to my portfolio this weekend. And I'll continue to make those changes. So we're going to make those changes together in real time. So welcome back. If you're new to our channel, welcome. You're watching Crypto Banter. This is, I guess, the craziest crypto channel in the world. I really should be in bed. And here I am talking to my family, to my community, uh, giving you guys the latest pearls of wisdom and love. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, join our family. There are a million reasons to do it. Well, last week there were not a million reasons. Last week there were 700,000 reasons. And that is because it turns out that last week on our stream, Freddie, get this. Last week on our stream, we gave away 50 uh, $100 prizes uh, for Star Terra, right? 50. What are they worth today? Uh, I think they're worth about uh, $7. $770,000. $773,000. 7.73. So we gave away almost $400,000. No, no, no. That was just this giveaway. Well, then we gave away those poly launches, which were over $250,000. So we almost gave away a million dollars on the stream last week to the banter family. Um, that's what this place is about. So if you're new to our channel, subscribe. Also subscribe to our other channel, Microdose. Um, it's the place that you can go to get a microdose of crypto content. 10 minutes, everything you need to know about the crypto markets with absolutely, absolutely, absolutely zero side effects. So yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Subscribe to our channel. This is going to be a shorter show. And that is because I'm still sick. Um, and... Um, but I do want to give you guys a quick update as to what's going on. Tomorrow on the show, I'm going to be showing you one piece of news that the entire market has missed. There's one piece of news out there. It's the biggest news that I've heard in 2021, and the entire market has missed it. There's a reason why I'm delaying it. I'm not telling you about it today. And that is because I need to make sure that it is as big as I think it is. But if it is as big as I think it is, the crypto market and specifically Bitcoin is going way, way, way over fifty thousand uh, dollars in the next couple of days. So, stay tuned for that. I don't think that it's the same news that Will Clemente is looking at. He came out a few seconds ago and said, "Strongest on-chain accumulation in the history of Bitcoin." Bears are flat out wrong. Enjoy the shakeout before fifty k plus. I think that what he is seeing here, he is seeing the same news that I saw, and the whales have seen the same news and they're starting to accumulate. And that's why he's saying that he's seen the strongest on-chain accumulation in history on Bitcoin. But regardless of that, the news today is not about Bitcoin. And that is because it looks like 
we are moving into an alt season. Remember, we spoke about this alt season index. And the alt season index effectively means that we're in alt season. Let's just quickly recap what it means. Alt season is if 75% of the top 50 coins perform better than Bitcoin in the last 90 days. Now, what you can see, quite interestingly, is you can see that we're not in alt season yet. We're in the very early parts of alt season. But in the last month, you can see that in the last month, we have definitely had an alt season month. And if we're having an alt season month this time, and if you follow the alt season cycle, which you can see the alt season always works in cycles, you can see that we're at the bottom or near the bottom and that logically the next step of this should be going up towards, the, towards a full blown alt season. So the indicators are showing us that alt season is here on the way, no matter which way you look at it. And the only thing that's holding us back right now is Bitcoin. And it's not a real surprise because we've been following Plan B's stock to flow model. And in his stock to flow model, Plan B says August will close at $47,000. September will close at $43,000. So I am now, we are one day away from August closing. We are at 48100 And remember that Plan B spoke about this on the 20th of June. So he didn't speak about this when the markets were running. He spoke about this on the 20th of June when the market was at the lowest point that it was. And he said, hold on a second. When we get to the end of August, we're going to be at 47,000. And when we get to September, we're going to be at 43,000. So we are playing out exactly as per plan B stock to flow model. And that stock to flow model takes us to $100,000 and $135,000 in December. And it lines up exactly with what we're seeing over here it's time for the alts to start shining. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening right now. The reason why Bitcoin is not moving is because right now there is not much, much institutional demand for Bitcoin. There's just not enough institutional demand for Bitcoin. You can see that the grayscale premium is still at negative 12%, which means that you can buy or any institution can buy Bitcoin 12% cheaper by just buying the grayscale shares. And for as long as that's the case, they're not going to go and buy um, tokens on, or Bitcoin on the open market. Why buy something on the open market and have to store it yourself when you can buy cheaper, 12.13% cheaper and let somebody else store it and you have insurance and you have everything else. So until this grayscale premium dries up and there is no overhang of, of, um, of Bitcoin and that would mean that the institutions would need to come in and start buying, until that happens, we're going to see Bitcoin flat and all the sunlight is going to be on the altcoins. And that lines up exactly with what Will Clemente said. He said, if anything does concern him, it is, where is the demand? Where is the demand for Bitcoin? Remember, he's only looking at Bitcoin and he's going and saying, well, guys, wh where is the institutional demand for Bitcoin? It looks like right now, the institutions are not interested in Bitcoin. But things are happening. And things are happening specifically, specifically in altcoins. We're going to look, we're going to see today that while Bitcoin is flat, there is this undercurrent that is happening in altcoins, specific certain altcoins. It's not every altcoin that's running. It's a handful of very, very select altcoins that, that are running. And we're going to look at those altcoins today. We're going to find out why they're running. And we're going to come up with a strategy. And that strategy today is going to be very, very, very intense. So let's look at the coins which are running. The coins that have run in the last, well, couple of days. So... The one, let's look at the last seven days. You can see that Cardano has had a bit of a run. You can see that Solana has absolutely, absolutely, absolutely exploded. You can see that uh, Avalanche, so let's look at uh, Avalanche. Avalanche, uh, it ran last week, but it's, had, it's, it's run a lot in the last couple of days. Phantom, so if we look at Phantom, um, let's see, where is Phantom on this list? I think it's a bit further down. Let's quickly look for it. You see that Phantom has absolutely exploded. And what you can see is that the narrative here is that a whole lot of layer ones, smart contract blockchains are the ones that are actually running. So it's not every token that's running. There's the Phantom. We did tell you about the Phantom announcement ages ago. We told you last week. I said to you, there's stuff coming out on Phantom and you guys need to be buying Phantom. So far on Phantom, we've had one of the three announcements. Uh, the first of the announcements was that Phantom just announced a 370 million phantom incentive program, um, which is about a $300 million incentive program for people who want to build on phantom. 
That's the first of the announcements. There are two more announcements. Um, one of them is huge. One of them, I just, I'm scared to say too much because then my source will basically have me killed and then I won't be able to do live streaming anymore. And that's the problem. So I need to make sure I can just say this without getting killed. Um, something to do with more institutions being able to load up on Phantom, making it a much more institutional, friendly, viable product. I mean, you guys can read between the lines. You know what? You know when the birdies talk, you know how it is when the birdies talk. We, we can't say too much, but this week is Phantom Week. There are going to be a whole lot of announcements on Phantom. We've hit, we've hit, we've seen the one announcement, which is this announcement over here, that there's an incentive program for Phantom. And you can also see that Andre Cronier has uh, become a Phantom cheerleader. He was the CTO there. He actually did build this protocol. Um, you can see that's the first announcement. He says, he also says, if you've ever used any swap, 0x Polygon, Avalanche, XDAI, REN protocol, connect uh, bridge, if you've used any other bridges, Phantom, will send, they will send you native Phantom to pay for your fees. So basically they're reimbursing people for their fees. He also says that Phantom has over 600 or $539 million locked up in DeFi and they haven't even started doing any incentives yet. So they haven't even started doing liquidity mining incentives, and already they have almost $500 million locked up in DeFi. So lots of news happening on Phantom. Phantom, um, Avalanche, there was a lot of news that happened a week ago. Uh, Solana is flying, Luna is flying, and there's a reason why these things are flying. The reason why these tokens are flying is because, as I said to you guys, we've moved into alt season. And in alt season, Bitcoin's gonna move sideways. Bitcoin will hover between 40 and $50,000. And I don't even expect it to get all the way back down to 40. But don't be surprised if Bitcoin goes down to say $45,000. Don't be surprised, it could happen. What I'm expecting for September is I'm expecting Bitcoin to move sideways and investors' attention, institutional attention to move away from Bitcoin and to move to the strong, layer ones and there's a very 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 critical critical key reason why this is happening so let's dig into the reason why this is happening um justina i know you love the apartment this is sheldon's apartment so we're in sheldino's house i came here because he's had COVID, and i've got kids and my kids were running around like you saw earlier um so let's look at what's going on why is it that there are certain layer ones that are running today and not others. And the long story short is that the whole run is being driven by NFTs. Everything, everything, everything is being driven by NFTs. NFTs have showed the world what blockchain adoption can do and how quickly blockchain adoption can actually take place. So I'm sure you'll agree with me that the growth in NFTs in bringing the mass market into crypto is the biggest thing that's ever happened and certainly the biggest thing that's ever happened to crypto. Now, NFTs, as I've mentioned to you before, are one experiment that has worked on Ethereum. DeFi is another experiment that has worked on Ethereum. What people are starting to realize is that if these are two experiments that have been successful on Ethereum, which is a base layer smart contract blockchain, what happens when another two or three of these experiments are successful. Look, what would happen? What happens if all of a sudden something takes off, which is another NFT? And what they're realizing is that even when Ethereum sorts out its scaling issues, and even when Ethereum moves to proof of stake, and even with, when Ethereum um, moves to ETH 2.0, Ethereum is just not gonna be enough. So whereas before some people said, look, ETH will get through its scaling issues, and when it does, you know, it'll be enough. ETH is no longer enough. People have realized that blockchain is going to not only disrupt existing industries, but it's going to create entirely, entirely, entirely new industries. And when that happens, no matter how much capacity Ethereum has got, well, Ethereum is not going to be able to handle it. And so now what the big investors are saying is they're saying, hold on, if Ethereum is not going to be able to handle all the base layer transactions, who's going to win? Where else can we put our money? And that is why the layer ones are running. Because in the last week, people, or two weeks or months, 
people have realized that this blockchain thing, this blockchain disruption is going to be way bigger than anything that they could have ever imagined. It's almost like telling someone in the 1980s and 1990s that one day you would have a cell phone with applications that you could order anything to your house with one touch of a button and it would be delivered. It's unfathomable. And that's exactly what's happening with blockchain. The disruption, the extent of the disruption is absolutely unfathomable. And what investors are starting to realize is that they're saying, hold on a second. If NFTs are going to explode like NFTs are exploding, if DeFi is going to explode, and if two other industries wake up, Ethereum is never going to handle this. And they're trying to put their money into other places, other layer ones that may complement Ethereum going forward. And when you get into that discussion about which layer ones are going to complement Ethereum going forward, you kind of left with a whole lot of options. The first option is Cardano, which is great. And in 12 days or in 13 days, Cardano will have smart contracts and then Cardano will enter the race. And that is a good one. And that is why, if you look at coin market cap today, why is this protocol that actually doesn't have any working um, smart contract applications working on it yet has a market cap of $90, $90 million, $90 billion. You can see it, you can see it over there. But then we scroll down and we realize that investors are also telling us that there are other smart contract applications that they believe will work. Solana is one of them. And that is why the Solana chart looks something like that. So they're betting that Solana may become a good alternative to, uh, to um, Ethereum. DOT is another one. We're going to talk about DOT and Kusama today. They're saying when it comes to payments, when it comes to payments, only payments, and DeFi, Luna is a great protocol. And that's why they're willing to give it a market cap of $13 billion. So what you can see is that investors are making a call and saying, look, the base layer protocols, Ethereum is not going to be enough. And if Ethereum is not going to be enough, we need to put our money on other ones. And that's exactly what's going on here today. Now, investors, I wasn't the only one who actually picked this up. There was an article. I think it was this article. Uh, it's called DeFi Uncovered, Hints of a Multi-Chain Future. Uh, and it was done by Glassnodes. It was an article that was published in Glassnodes. And in this article, it says, interest in alternate smart contract chains hit a new stride in the past few weeks as prices of Avalanche, Solana, and Terra explode. And what you can see here is how these smart contract platforms have all exploded. So the green one is, of course, Solana. You got Cosmos, which is the blue one. You got Terra, which has exploded, and then you got Avalanche, which has absolutely explo ex explo exploded. So that's what what's going on at the moment. They're realizing that one protocol isn't enough, and the future is actually a multi-chain future. And if the and if the future is a multi-chain future, then for us it presents the biggest opportunity of our lives. And I'll tell you why in a second. I just want to have a, a sip of water, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> so, if there is a multi-chain future, then we have the biggest opportunity of our lives. And I'll tell you why. Because when Ethereum came out, we thought that it was going to be a one smart contract chain future. And therefore, everybody put, put all their money into Ethereum. And we saw a model on Ethereum of how things happen. First, the developers get attracted then the venture capital money comes in, then people start building amazing applications, then people start locking up their money in these amazing applications, which we call total value locked. And that is what builds an ecosystem. Lucky for us, it's happening again. And because we know what to look for, we know which chains to jump into. And we know which applications to buy into. And we know what the warning signs are or what the signs are before we need to buy something. And that's what we're going to be talking about now. We're going to be talking about how to identify the winning chains, the winning protocols, and then what are the projects around them that you need to buy. And you'll see that what happened to me over the weekend was I actually made one of the biggest investment decisions of my life. And over the weekend, I tweeted that I'm selling all my Ethereum and I'm switching them into Solana. Now, if you've been watching the show, you know that that's the, the, 
the biggest move that I could possibly make because Ethereum sits in my HODL portfolio. Freddie, do we have my old HODL portfolio here, the one with Ethereum? Okay, so my HODL portfolio is a portfolio which I never, ever, ever touch. It sits with custodians. Once I send something into my HODL portfolio, it never, ever leaves the HODL portfolio. It just remains and it lives in the HODL portfolio and I cannot touch it. But this weekend, I made a phone call to the custodians and I said, look, we're dumping Ethereum, not all of it. I did keep some Ethereum because I want to be prudent. But I want to put a whole lot of the money that I've got in Ethereum into two other protocols. Yeah, two, not one protocol. So what are the protocols and why did I choose those protocols? Bet you want to know, right? And I think you do know because you guys watch this on, on, on the weekend. You watch my Twitter and I know you guys follow me on Twitter at Crypto Man Ran, and I know you follow Sheldon Sniper, Sheldon underscore Sniper. But I'm seeing something happen that I've only ever seen once before. I'm seeing something profound happen on an ecosystem that I've only ever seen once before. I saw it in the early days of Ethereum. I saw the smartest people, the smartest money, the smartest applications, and the biggest communities being built around Ethereum. I saw brain power and money being attracted to one place, and that was Ethereum. Excuse me. And I'm seeing it happen all over again. But this time, it's happening with, a, with, with the Ethereum roadmap in the history. So in other words, this time when it's happening, people can look at the Ethereum roadmap and say, hold on, Ethereum did this wrong, Ethereum did that wrong, Ethereum did that wrong. We're not going to make those mistakes. And the ecosystem that I'm seeing this happen at is, of course, no, none other than Solana. So this is why I made a decision that I'm going to put a massive part of my portfolio into Solana, even at the current prices. So I took about half my Ethereum, I liquidated about half my Ethereum, and I've started to swap it into Solana and into one other protocol. And I'll show you which is the other protocol in a second. So the reason why I went all into Solana is because I've seen that happen before. And I remember watching this happen before when ETH was $100 and $200 and $300 and how ETH went to three and $4,000. I remember the, the developer activity. I remember the venture capital money that was flowing into it. I remember the quality and caliber of ideas that were being built on Ethereum. And I'm seeing it happen now on Solana. I'm seeing VCs, the best VCs, Multicoin Capital. We had Carl Samani on our show last week. We had um, uh, uh, we, uh, Sam Bankman-Fried on our show. We had Raj on our show. But you see that the smart money today, Sam Bankman-Fried with his huge balance sheet, Carl Samani and a whole lot of other people are all looking at projects which are being built on Solana. And Solana, unlike Ethereum, now remember that in 2017 and 2018, we had Ethereum and we had money flowing into Ethereum. But that's not what, you, what it was all about. Because the technology that Ethereum was built on didn't actually work. It didn't scale, it was too slow, it was, it was proof of work, it needs to move to, to proof of stake. Solana works perfectly. It is fully decentralized. In fact, let me show you some of the numbers. So this will maybe give you guys an analysis of, um, of Solana. So let me, let me zoom in on that. So this is a technology map of all the different blockchain technologies that are out there. And what you can see by looking at this is that Solana is amongst the quickest. So it's, it's maybe not as quick as Ethereum. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it, it is the quickest. It's got a block time of 0 0.4 seconds. It has the lowest transaction speed. It has 600 validators, which make it completely decentralized. And it is currently working in mainnet and applications are being built on Solana every single day. Now, when I look at this and I say to myself, hold on a second, Solana does 65,000 transactions per second with a block time of 0 0.4 seconds with a transaction fee of less than one cent. Cardano does less transactions per second and costs 21 cents per transaction. And Cardano 
has a market cap of right now $90 billion. And Solana, even though Solana is currently at 100 bucks exactly as we speak, Solana has a market cap of $30 billion. Ethereum has a market cap of $400 billion. What I'm seeing here is I'm seeing that Solana has huge, huge, huge upside. And people are starting to realize that Solana may be this, this, the cheapest blockchain at the moment. Is there any reason why Solana shouldn't be trading at the same market cap as Cardano? Solana has an amazing, huge ecosystem. In fact, even this morning, Charles came out from Cardano and he said, Solana, you guys seem to be making waves. Congratulations. Where can I learn more? And Raj, who was on our show, said, hey, the DMs are open. And Charles obviously sent him a DM. So something is, 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 something is going on here on Solana. And we cannot discount what is happening on Solana. Um, I do want to read this to you as well. There was, a, there was an article that I wanted to read to you guys. I'm sure I had this article for you guys. Second from the right. Let's have a look here. No, one no. There was an article that I wanted to show you that talks about institutions that are actually buying a whole lot of um, institutions, looking to buy a whole lot of uh, Solana. Not only that, we have um, we have we have institutions looking to buy Solana. We have fees on Solana being very very low. We have the main net live at the moment. We have NFTs which have exploded on Solana at the moment. So we had the, the it's called Degen Apes, right? So we had the degenerative apes that exploded on Solana. And you can see this is actually a map of the total market cap of NFTs on Solana. And there are, there is $166 billion of NFTs currently on Solana. Currently, currently, currently on Solana, we have $166 billion of, um, $166 million of, um, uh, uh, of NFTs on Solana. We also have DeFi on Solana. And right now, as you can see, there's $3.1 billion locked up on Solana. So in a nutshell, I made a decision to sell my ETH and to put the money into Solana. And not only am I going to sell ETH, but I'm also going to start selling a lot of the ETH based projects that I hold. And I hold a whole lot of ETH-based ETH -based projects. So things like Uniswap, things like SushiSwap, things like Yearn. What I'm doing is I am selling some of those and I'm starting to buy into the Solana ecosystem. Where do I get this ecosystem? Well, I go to DeFi Llama and I look at the total value locked on Solana. And what I can see is that there are a whole lot of projects that have traction, for example, Radium, which is this exchange, and I want to talk to you about this exchange in a second. Um, Radium is an amazing, amazing, amazing project which is built on Solana. It's like the Uniswap of Solana, but it's actually way better than uh, the Uniswap, the, the Uniswap, and we're going to talk about that in one second. There's also Saber. There's Serum, which is this decentralized DEX. There is Solfarm. So you can go into any of these applications. You can click. If you go to DeFi Llama, you can click onto any of these. Let's click on that one just for, as an example. It takes you here and you can see exactly what the project is. So this is a yield aggregator on Solana. Uh, it's called Solfarm. And this is probably something like a, a year in finance or a Y in finance. Um, let me find a diff another one for you, which I want to show you. Mm. Fred, did you send me that? What is radium? You send me that, that, that Radium tweet. Send it into, into the show group. Let Freddie get it first. But what I'm trying to show you is that it's actually not about Solana. It's actually about the whole ecosystem that is being built around Solana. And specifically, I want to talk to you about um, Radium. So Radium is effectively the Uniswap of Solana. It's, it's a DEX. But it's a much better DEX than Uniswap, than Uniswap actually is. And I want, you, I want you to understand this. Solana is better than Uniswap, uh, than Ethereum, because it's faster, 
and because it's cheaper. And because it's faster and cheaper, it allows for a whole lot of different applications to be built, specifically around trading. If you think to yourself around trading and creating an order book for trading, it would mean that if you wanted to create an order book, you would have to put in your order, which would cost you gas fees, and then you would have to take out your order when you want to remove your order, and that would cost you gas fees. And if you wanted to increase your order, it would cost you gas fees. But with Solana, because the transaction sp speeds are so fast and the gas fees are so small, you can do a whole lot of these different applications that are impossible on Ethereum. And so you can create a DEX with a central exchange type interface. So let's read this, um, this thread from DeFi India. It says, a thread on Radium, the top DEX on Solana. Radium is a decentralized exchange built on Solana. Radium's shared liquidity with Serum, which is a, a DEX on Solana, allows it to have a centralized order book. What is a centralized order book? One of the advantages of a centralized exchange versus a decentralized exchange is the ability to create limit orders. Now you can't do that on Ethereum because every time you did that, you'd need to create an order and pay gas. It would take a long time to get into the system. But on Solana, it's quick and it's free or almost free. So limit orders are when you tell the exchange to trigger a buy sell price when the price hits. This is not possible in AMMs. Traders and investors prefer to specify the price at which you'd like to trade. If you've ever traded on Uniswap, you know this. It's so frustrating that you can't specify the price at which you want to buy or sell. It means you have to sit there and wait for the price to get to the price you want to get at. Radium's exchange was built in the philosophy of allowing the best AMM and central order books. When a user enters a trade, it will either be made using Radium's own liquidity or routed to the decentralized exchange book on Serum, depending on where the best liquidity can be found. In DeFi, liquidity is often siloed between different platforms like SushiSwap and Uniswap. Radium and Serum are actually sharing liquidity. Radium takes advantage of the low cost of using the network. Traders will often enter limit orders, cancel it, modify it, and a whole lot of new parameters, and enter all of these into a command fee. Solana benefits from low fees. Each transaction cost costs less than one cent. Okay, so what you're getting is that Radium is actually a far superior product and what you can do on Radium as just one example of Solana is more than you can do on Uniswap. And that's just one example. There are many examples of these. There's Mango Markets, which is, uh, I don't know if it's here. Let's have a look at and see if we can show you guys Mango Markets. One of my favorite exchanges that is being built on Solana. So let's have a look at it. See if we can show you guys a, here's another one, Mango Markets. Um, let's see if it will allow us to show you guys the interface without actually having, there we go. So let's see if it will allow us in. There we go. And you can see that the interface on Solana looks exactly like a centralized exchange interface. And that is because of the low transaction fees. So there's a whole DeFi world on Solana. You can find this DeFi world by going to DeFi Llama and looking up the projects that are live and active on Solana. You can see them, they're all listed right over here. You can do your research. And then what you can do is you can find the applications that worked on Ethereum, look at the Solana alternative, find out if the Solana alternative promises to resolve it better. And if it does, take some of the money that you put on Ethereum and put it onto Solana. Because Solana, the Solana is very, very, very young in its journey, and Ethereum is very, very, very far ahead. So it's almost like you have the cheat sheet. Someone showed you, they said, look, DEXs work, centralized exchanges work, DeFi works. Now it's being built on Solana, and it's still cheap. In fact, it's way cheaper than, uh, it's, it's still very, very, very cheap. And the experience of buying on Solana is also a little bit hard at the moment. So if you look at, for example, Let's look at Mango Markets. I want, to give you, I want to show you guys an example. So this is Mango Markets. I'm looking, up, I'm looking it up on CoinGecko. And what I want to show you is that with all these Solana projects, the only place to buy them is actually on Solana exchanges. So either on Radium or on, uh, so let's have a look here. You click on Markets. Markets tells you what exchanges. And you can see that a, a lot of the Solana projects have liquidity on, on FTX, which is great. That means there is liquidity. But you can see that the other places to buy it are on Serum and on Radium. 
That means that right now, most people are not using serum and radium. People haven't started using serum and radium like they've started using Uniswap and SushiSwap. And so if you get in early before the masses and you teach yourself how to use the Solana in interfaces and buy these tokens, the masses will come because Solana is about to explode. So that is the reason why I took a huge chunk of my portfolio, huge chunk of my portfolio. Let's put up the old one. This was my old portfolio. This was my old one. Remember Bitcoin and Ethereum. And my entire HODL portfolio has now changed. Do you want to show them what the new HODL portfolio looks like? Bang, that's my new portfolio. My Bitcoin position has stayed the same. I've taken over half the money that I had in, uh, in ETH and I moved some of it to Arweave and some of it to Solana. And it's completely changed the structure of my HODL portfolio, but I've done it strategically. And you can see, I've given you the reasons why I switched into Solana. You may be asking, what is it that got me to put Arweave into the HODL portfolio and to put so much more money into Arweave? And this is a story that I have to tell you guys. It's a big story. So I bought into Arweave in the ICO. In 2017, I was one of their first investors and it was a very promising protocol. But in the crypto winter, in the crypto winter, when everybody gave up on crypto, I also went through some of my own phases at the time. And I tried to sell my I tried to sell some of my R weave tokens. And at the time I paid about 20 cents for R weave. I, I, did, I paid about 20 cents for my R weave tokens. And I tried to sell them. And I went and R weave wasn't listed on any exchanges anywhere in the world. So what did I do? I started texting friends and asking friends if they would buy my Arweave position. And you can see, here's, here's a, a real text from 2nd of April, 2019. Quick question, what is the latest on Arweave? Is there any plan to get them liquid at any point? And the guy asked me, do you want to sell your tokens? And I obviously I didn't want to show my hand. So I said, not really, I just want to know what the valuation is. Are there any buyers? And he said, I'd buy at under 20 cents and I'd pay 20 cents for my tokens. Anyway, one text later, it says, I'm paying 17 cents. Three cents was the difference. Three cents was the difference. And I said, no, I'm not gonna sell it at a loss. And so we left it. That was one of the biggest, that would have been one of the biggest mistakes of my life had I sold it. And I've held our weave ever since and today it's become one of my biggest positions. But more importantly, there's a good reason why my HODL portfolio looks like this. There's a good, good, good reason why my HODL portfolio looks like that. I'll show you in a second what it is. Arweave is a file storage protocol. And the, the way that Arweave works is it, you pay once and the data is stored forever. So unlike Filecoin or Microsoft uh, services or Azure or, or Amazon services or whatever else, with Filecoin, you pay once. You pay to store an NFT, you would pay $5, but you would store your NFT for life. Unlike any other file storage thing where you pay per gig per month or per meg per month, with Arweave, you pay once and you store something forever. And we'll, we'll talk about what that actually means. Arweave is the only service in the world that allows people to store data forever. And if you think about data that needs to, store, to be stored forever, usually it is blockchain data. So just think, if you're buying an NFT and your NFT is valued at a million dollars, surely you want to make sure that that is stored forever and you're willing to pay two or three dollars extra to make sure that that's stored forever. That's what Arweave does. And in fact, Solana is one of the blockchains which stores everything on Arweave. So here's my thinking. If Solana stores everything on Arweave, as much as Solana grows, Arweave will grow. Because think about it, like if every transaction on Solana is then stored on Arweave, then the more Solana grows, the more Arweave grows. If Solana fails, which I doubt it will, but let's say Solana does fail, many other blockchains may also adopt Arweave. So to me, Arweave actually becomes more important than Solana. 
Because for as long as Solana grows, our weave grows. And then other blockchains will also adopt our weave and other applications will also adopt our weave. And so that's where the epiphany happened for me. Our weave currently has a market cap, even after the pump this weekend, even after the pump this weekend, our weave has a market cap of $2 billion. $2 billion, that's it. Compared to Cardano, which has a $90 billion market cap, compared to Solana, which has a $30 billion market cap, our weave has a $1.792 billion market cap. Right now, Solana is the only blockchain that is backing itself up onto our weave, but there is no other option if you want to pay once and store forever. Not in centralized services and not in decentralized services. To me, sounds like a fucking no-brainer. No fucking brainer. And that's why I made a huge, I mean, a huge decision. Have you seen me talk about changing my HODL portfolio? But my HODL portfolio, it doesn't look like this yet. It'll look like this by the end of the week because I'm switching. The next question you're asking is, should we switch now even at the current prices? It doesn't matter because you're switching Ethereum for Solana, Ethereum for Arweave. And so all the tokens are probably priced relatively at the same price. If the whole market comes down, the market will come down together. So you're not gaining and you're not losing. That's why I started to switch. And I think by the end of this week, my entire, entire, entire switch will be complete. And my horror portfolio will look something like this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Sure, I'm tired. <laughs> Freddie says, wrap it up. It's enough for, for one day. I think he's right. Are you playing Axie? I'm watching the show, buddy. Fantastic, fantastic, Whoa. fantastic show. I'm in the room. I'm in the room. <laughs> love it, dude. Love it, love it, love it. I'm comfy. I'm comfy. <laughs> Shall be, no. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> love this guy. Thanks for letting me use your spot, man. Oh, it did. It actually looks amazing. It looks fantastic. It looks amazing, right? It looks fantastic. I, okay, I think it's, it's the new it. spot. I think it's the new spot. Then I can chill like us in the room. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, guys. Look, I'm going to get some rest. I'll be on Twitter at Crypto Man Run. Um, I will be tweeting a lot. I will see you guys again tomorrow on Sheldon Show, um, where I will... Yeah, there's, a, there's a, a very big piece of news we haven't got there yet. Also, I want to talk to you tomorrow about Kusama and how you can make huge money in Kusama. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Big, 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 big show. So see you there. Um, hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow. Until then, guys, trade well. Bring home the money. I hope you've enjoyed the show. See you all later, my friends. Trade well. This is Crypto Venta, Crypto Venta for you, this is Crypto Venta, this is Crypto Venta, this is Crypto Venta, Crypto Venta for you, smash those likes. I made it. <laughs> At one point there, I thought I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> well done, brother. Well done. Brother. I thought I wasn't going to make it. You started going very white in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back into bed, I think. <laughs> amazing, but amazing show. But I mean, did you, you understand the, the whole reason to buy Arweave. Because yeah, if Solana works, Arweave grows. If Solana doesn't work, some other blockchain will. But inevitably, other blockchains may also get onto Arweave. That's beautiful. It's a hedge against all of it. It's an option on all the blockchains. It's an asymmetrical investment. Well, if Solana works with Arweave, then it'll be the greatest ad for Arweave.
Yeah, well, Solana is going to work. Solana is guaranteed. Not guaranteed. There's no guarantees, but you know what I'm saying. Buy the dip. Buy the dip. Just, just yeah. buy the dip. Keep buying the dip. And every time it dips, just I hope, keep buying them. I hope, I hope Plan B was right and that we do see a dip to 43,000 in September. And if, if we do, that gives us a chance to... That'll give us a chance to buy the altcoins much cheaper. But I know exactly what I'm buying. I'm going for Solana. I'm going for Arweave. Um, I'm going for Cardano. I'm going for those ones. I think the dip will go a little bit lower than we think. 38. 